My name is Valerie Edward. I'm a lawyer and patent and trademark agent at Ballon Edward LLP. The typical process uh, for patenting uh, for a Canadian inventor uh, would be filing uh, a regular patent application uh, with patent claims, description, abstract drawings, sort of on day one before the invention is made public. Uh, and then the inventor would follow up with applications in other countries claiming priority from the first application uh, within one year of the first filing. Now, if the inventor is short of cash, which happens with a lot of, of uh, startups, uh, then the inventor would be able to file a United States provisional application uh, instead of filing the first regular application. Uh, that's something that can be done very quickly and cheaply, uh, and as long as it's done carefully, uh, it would form the basis of a priority claim for a regular patent application. The term provisional patent is actually a misnomer. Uh, there's no such thing as a provisional patent, but a provisional patent application is a filing tool that inventors can use to claim a date that they will later use as a priority claim when they file a regular patent application. A patent is considered to be a bargain between the inventor and uh, the public. In exchange for the inventor telling the public about the invention, making that technology available, they're entitled to a monopoly uh, over the idea for a limited period of time. But if an inventor already makes the invention uh, known to the public without filing a patent application, then there's no reason to reward the inventor by granting a patent because the information's already out there. So it's critical then to keep the information confidential if you actually want to file a patent application on it. Any kind of information put out into the public uh, that explains how the invention works, how to make it, how to use it. Uh, so idea, or typically uh, a disclosure could be uh, a description of a product uh, on a website, uh, could be a scientific paper that uh, a researcher is, is presenting at a, at a colloquium or something like that. If the inventor does uh, nothing during the one-year period after the patent application is filed, uh, then the application is simply going to sit in the patent office. It will expire at the end of one year. It will remain completely confidential. Uh, and it's as if no one ever knew that the application existed. Uh, the inventor can file a regular application and claim priority from the provisional, uh, in which case the provisional will eventually become searchable. Or the quickest idea, I guess, would be to file a, a United States provisional patent application. Uh, the application can simply be the disclosure or the paper that would otherwise have been presented, uh, and uh, it can be filed online uh, very quickly, and it the disclosure will exist as a United States provisional patent application uh, for one year from the date when it's filed. That way the inventor can you know, uh, present the paper at a, at a conference or, or whatever they want to do with it, uh, but still they preserved uh, a filing date that they can use uh, as a basis for a patent application. The most important thing to remember if you're going to file a provisional patent is to make sure that the disclosure that you file is as complete as you can make it. Uh, you should be providing information on uh, what the invention is, why it's better than what's been done before, how to make it, how to use it. Uh, you want to have the, as complete a, a disclosure as possible uh, because you only get credit or the right to claim priority uh, for the material that's contained in the provisional application. So if you have not disclosed something in the provisional application, you're not going to have that filing date when you come down the road to put that information into uh, a more complete patent application later on.